Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government, labor and business have again met to try to find ways to deal with the challenges facing the local steel sector. Natalie Grieve tells us more. Hi Natalie. Hi, what is the latest with regards to requests for government to impose an import tariff on steel? Well, last week we saw uh, a watershed meeting between labor, business and government where uh, labor and business showed a very rare collective show of force to try and communicate to government that something needed to be done to stem what they describe as a, a jobs bloodbath in the metals and steel industry. Um, they claim that as many as 40,000 jobs could be lost by the end of the year if something isn't done. And as a result of this meeting, government is committed to supporting labor and business application to ITAC, which is the uh, International Trade Administration Committee of South Africa, to have a 10% tariff imposed on the import of steel into the country. Um, and that's the, the threshold allowed under South Africans' World Trade Organization commitments. Um, now, it's significant because this shows an appetite by government to support a sector that has for the last couple of years been battling passive local uh, consumption, stalled infrastructure projects, um, and these, these cheap imports. Um, and it's also significant that, that government is supporting the application, but has made it quite clear that it's going to maintain uh, its independence and it's going to do so in a very legal way, because ultimately the decision does lie with Altac. Um, another significant element of this is that it's now uh, a break away from the kind of adversarial relationship we've seen between the three parties in the past. Um, and it's the first time we've actually seen government, business and labor coming together and acknowledging that the steel uh, and metal sector is in a crisis. What other significant resolutions were taken during the meeting? Uh, well, one of South Africa's largest steel makers, ArcelorMittal South Africa, has um, made an application to, or has committed to making an application by the end of the month to ITAC um, in terms of anti-dumping, and it says that this will be closely followed by another four applications. Um, it's also really emphasized the need for this to be expedited. So the Department of uh, Economic Development and the Department of Trade and Industry has also committed to working with AMSA to introducing some sort of fast track mechanisms. So this could see uh, provisional uh, anti-dumping measures or safeguard duties. Um, we've also seen a commitment by government to support uh, labor and businesses application to have the steel industry designated. So it's going to, through the Department of Public Enterprises, form a committee, and this committee is going to look at how state-owned companies can um, expedite and enhance their local, local spend, specifically when it comes to the steel sector. Another commitment by government is that the Department of Economic Development said that it's going to look at how it can try and stem the scourge um, and this outflow of scrap metal out of the country, which it claims is really throttling the local industry. Um, in, on the jobs front, we've seen a commitment by all the parties to also try and have a look at how the sweeping retrenchments can be mitigated. So the Department of, Indus, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry is, for example, going to look at, at how it can use some of its programs to try and offset the retrenchments through subsidies and the like. Are the various parties optimistic that they'll be able to save the domestic steel sector? Most of the parties have been quite pragmatic about what the, you know, the outcomes of these measures could be. Business in particular has said that uh, you know, while it's, it's, it's lauded the fact that there's now this enhanced tripartite collaboration, it's emphasized that it can't be seen as a quick fix, fix uh, in a market that's still battling quite oppressive market externalities. Um, so CEO Paulo Flatty, for example, said that you know, this will go a long way towards setting the business up for the future but these short-term challenges still exist. Um, and this is a, a sentiment that's supported by the Steel Engineering Federation of South Africa. Um, their head has basically said that it's too late for the challenges that the market currently finds itself in to be repaired, but this could help with some longer-term issues. Um, on the labor front, we saw the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa General Secretary Irvin Jim saying that um, you know, the fact that we saw business and labor come together, uh, as we should see this as indicative of, of the urgency with which this, this industry actually needs help. Um, he's also called on government to accelerate its infrastructure rollout program. Um, interestingly, he says that while there's all this talk of uh, these infrastructure projects in the pipeline, no one seems to know where the pipe is. So in terms of the efficacy um, of, of all of these different measures, uh, it's definitely a case of time will tell. Thank you. 
That's the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.